Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Can you believe that? Eight years. Eight incredible years. It honestly doesn't feel like eight. It feels like 28 years. Um, you know, when we first started Elevate Church, um, as we've been on this series called Better Together, I want you to understand that it simply started with this piece of paper of just writing some things that God wanted for this community. My wife and I got together. He, first of all, he called us out. Okay, we had been serving faithfully for 14 years in our church, and, uh, and, and God calls us, and he says, I have, a, I have a mission, I have a dream that I want to come to pass. And as we sat and we prayed and we fasted, and, and we sought God. God began to speak things to us. And we just begin to write and write and write. And when we were done writing this, this, this dream, I would say dream. Because I want you to know that this isn't just about uh, a birthday of Elevate Church. This is about you and I who are a part of God's dream. You're sitting in God's dream right now. Do you realize that? You're sitting in his dream. You're, you're, in the, you're in the pocket of his dream right now. And as we just began to write all these things down that God wanted, uh, he, you know, a, a facility for families to bring enjoyment, uh, uh, a, a school for children, a diverse church, uh, a multi-generational church, uh, the media airways being taken with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had this big, huge dream. And, and as I'm reading everything after, listen, after you wrote it, the first step is very simple. Just start writing what he tells you. The second step? is the hardest. Then you're passing out because you're just like, how in the world is this going to happen? Because before you were here, it, no one, nobody was here. It was just me and my wife walking in here and just like, God, who's even going to want to come listen to us? Who's going to want to even come and hang out with us? And, uh, and I want you to know that when, when God does something uh, special and unique in someone's life, he does it in partnership. Everybody say partnership. So, so Jesus said, Without the Father, without him, I can do nothing. And so I want today to, to, to speak to your heart. I want today's celebration to stir something in your heart and ask yourself, I wonder if I'm a partner with God in this life. I wonder if, if I'm just doing my thingdom or if I'm really building his kingdom. Is it just my thingy? Huh? Is it just me trying to build something for me? Come on, is my life just about I? Or am I living a life that is better together with God's dream? Because every single one of you, like it or not, like it or leave it, come on today, you can take something and, and decide God has a dream locked inside of you. And the only key to that is Jesus. Jesus is the only one that could unlock that scary, crazy, enormous, ginormous, life-changing dream that God wants to bring through your life. Now, you don't have to have a platform to have a dream like that. You don't need a platform. None of you. And I want you to understand, as you hear our, our message today, I want you to understand something. You know what? Before ministry, I worked in the corporate world. And I was living God's dream during that corporate world time. And I had 15 staff members that were my staff in the corporate world. I managed them. I led them. But let me tell you something. But beyond me being a successful business person in the corporate world, I led all 15 of my staff members to Jesus Christ in the workplace. It took me five years. But when I left, on my last day, I got the atheist who was on my team. You see, some of us think that God's dream is a Billy Graham. God's dream is a Joel Osteen. God's dream is something so, no, listen, God's dream can simply be you changing the area of influence he has given you. Or do you just show up and work? Do you just show up and do life? Or are you just doing whatever it is that you're talented and gifted to do and there's no fruit of God's dream? Are you guys with me today? And so look what, look what Jesus said. This is in the red, okay? So it's in the red. Okay, when you read the scriptures in the red, that's Jesus going gangster on you and me. Look what he says, uh, 19 verse 26. He says, everybody say, he said. he said. 
Look at your neighbor and say, hey, he said it. The big man said it. So don't be tripping. He said, that's what I mean. Because once you write it, it's like, how in the world? I was overwhelmed. And he's like, God's like, did I stutter? That, what, I, what you wrote is what I mean. Because you begin to question the dream. And when you question the dream, you can question God's promise for your life. And he says, that's exactly what I mean. Risk your life and get more than you ever dreamed of. It was a risk starting Elevate Church. You know why? Because not only once have I had to leave everything when I first went into ministry. Can you believe that I went from corporate America to being a janitor at a church? Does that sound like a God dream? It does. <laughs> it is. See, to the natural man, it's not because that's a demotion. But in God's kingdom, there's never a demotion. There's only promotions with God. When you obey him, promotion. Hey. Oh, I know it's true. Let me give you a definition of God's given dream quickly. God-given dream simply means this. It's a hopeful pursuit of something that's beyond your natural ability that honors who? Who does it honor? God. Who does it honor? God. Does it say honor you? No. no. It honors who? God. Does your life honor God? The only way to honor God is by living out the dream within. Because there's two lives right now. You're living, there's the, there's the live life that you're living or there's the unlived life that's still within you. And so he says, we do this in, in order to honor God. And it also what? It helps who? People. A dream includes people. It doesn't just mean you, your wife, your husband, your children, us four no more. Well, in the Mexican family, us 14 and no more. <laughs> we started Elevate Church because God had a dream for people who were far away from God to come to know him. As I'm preparing to preach in the next few weeks with a guest speaker uh, here at Elevate, we'll have Pastor Rusty uh, from Real Life. We'll, he and I will be tag teaming together. And um, one thing we were talking about is that um, only 17% of Santa Claridians go to church. 17%. You know what that means? That even if, if, if every Santa Claridian came to church on Sunday in Santa Clarita Valley, there wouldn't be enough churches to facilitate all of them. Do you see why God's dream invites people? Only 17%. And so here's what we did. Every year we do something unique for our anniversary. This year I wanted to do something different. And I want to show you, everybody say God's dream. Because God wanted us to create a mini documentary of his dream of Elevate Church. And you know who Elevate Church is? Grab your finger, go like this. Everybody go like this. If someone's not lifting up their finger, twist it. Someone please right now. <laughs> Ushers, I don't, go like this. And then turn it like this. You're in his dream, and you were his dream to begin with. So I want you to set your eyes on the screen and just see what God has done. And if we haven't, we couldn't even put it all in there. But we at least want to give you a taste of how a dream of God can start on a piece of paper with a bunch of scribble scrabble and then become a vision into reality. However, God is still unfolding his dream for you. Watch this. first joined the kids team, I was given such a great opportunity to help kids discover God by bringing the Bible to life. Over the years, eKids has grown in its creativity, its quality, and its influence. It's so incredible to see how God will bring in families who just want to throw in the towel, but then God will use us to help them discover who Jesus is, and then he'll take those lives, transform them, and put them in a position where they can thrive in every aspect of their life. 
This is the reason why we do what we do for eight years and until Jesus returns. You know, Elevate Kids Global is such a unique and supernatural ministry. It all started in 2015 when I was walking through the streets of Oaxaca, Mexico, looking for coffee, coffee to bring back to the United States and open a cafe. But to my surprise, God had other plans. I remember sitting uh, late at night, about 11 o'clock at night, and there was a child walking by selling gum and candy. And I offered him food since it looked like he hadn't eaten and uh, he looked pretty hungry. I can just tell by the kid's face. And he sat with me and as he looked at the menu, it was like five minutes of him just staring at it. And I thought, wow, this kid's picky. But I realized after a while, that he had these puppy eyes looking at me. And I said, what's wrong? He says, I don't know how to read. As I learned this, I started investigating a little bit more about this kid named Alejandro, who was 11 years old. And I found out that he was taken from his family from a state called Chiapas, which is in Mexico, and brought to Oaxaca. What happened was um, a group of people had uh, given his family money to give him a better life. But in reality, it was a lie. He was now being labor trafficked, which is a huge, huge issue in Oaxaca, Mexico. After investigating the next day, I started realizing that Oaxaca, Mexico has a population of 50% children and 45% of that population is illiterate. And I remember walking the streets of Oaxaca overwhelmed with everything I was learning about labor trafficking, sex trafficking, all this type of trafficking with at-risk children. God spoke to me and he said, open for me a school. And I just thought, how are we going to do this? I mean, we're barely doing Elevate Church. How is it, God, that we're going to do a school, though? It is a part of God's vision, part of opening Elevate. And uh, God orchestrated everything. And he brought the right people into our life. Some friends that lived in Mexico City now became the directors of our school. And we started dreaming together with Elevate Church and our church congregation. And then I just cast a vision and told everyone, God wants us to do this. And uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, there were people that were not in agreement. But when God speaks a word, you, you obey him. And because of that obedience, I can tell you that today um, we have a school with 17 children who have never been in a school setting, who were illiterate and who are now reading, writing, and they went from having no purpose, no passion, no vision for anything. And now when you ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? They can clearly tell you the things they want to accomplish for God. And they even have a personal relationship with Jesus. And then out of this school was also birthed a church, a church that is reaching the community. So I just want to say that eKids Global uh, is not only impacting kids in Oaxaca, but beyond that, we've been able to help out children in different parts of the world, like uh, Costa Rica, Africa, Japan, and we got to open Ivory Life Cafe that continues to support the cause. Remember, with God, no child is invisible. And for that, I am grateful. Thank you, Elevate Church. Okay. And about two years ago, uh, our pastors asked us to lead the missions team here at Elevate. And over the past two years, we've taken multiple trips. First couple of trips were uh, for building purposes, uh, remodeling a school building where we were able to bring in a group of kids who previously have had no education. Many of these children go to bed hungry, and when they're not in school, there are times where they don't eat at all. So along with the education, we're also providing them some meals. We recently just successfully came back from our first missions trip, which we took 17 uh, members from the church. Live Lives were changed. I believe this is just the beginning of many, many trips to come. We were just able to share a little bit of hope with them that you know any, anything and everything is possible. Just believing in Jesus Christ and just following and believing He's going to be there to provide the way. So after the first of several devastating earthquakes in Mexico, we felt in our heart that we had to help. So out of that desire in our hearts uh, was birthed a new ministry, Elevate First Responders. And our church responded. Uh, we came through in a very big way. It was heartbreaking to see all the devastation. People whose homes had just completely collapsed. They were just in rubble. We were able to structure a team of pastors and community leaders. Aside from the immediate relief, we had a long-term plan of helping some of those pastors and community leaders establish micro-businesses. So I am honored to be part of a team that not only helps people here in our own community, but is ready, willing, and able to be the first responders anywhere in the world. 
In just two short years, we went from serving coffee and donuts through a wooden crate out in the parking lot to becoming a full-size pod cafe that offers a page-long list of menu items. And I'm so passionate about this ministry because not only do we get to serve everyone that comes into the cafe, but we also help support at-risk children all around the globe. And that includes a school that was opened up by eKids Global down in Oaxaca, Mexico. So if you haven't checked us out yet, come on out to the parking lot, grab a coffee and donut, and bless a child today. We've been doing food pantry out in Santa Paula for the last two years, and it's a passion for me because I've been homeless at one time in my life. Through this ministry, we've seen tens of thousands of people fed. We've seen miracles. We've seen people healed from cancer, come out of comas, get out of debt, you name it. God has done it for this community. Not only do we learn from the Word of God here at this church, but we also place it into action. That's why we've seen such amazing results in Santa Paula. It's been an incredible eight years with this ministry, and we're just really looking forward to everything that God has for the future with Elevate Church in our community. We've been a part of Echo Youth for about five years now, and we are now helping Pastor Jessica oversee Echo Youth Ministry. It's amazing to know that youth ministry isn't about a message, it's not about a hangout, but it's about us youth leaders catapulting our youth to be everything that God has called them to be. This generation is hungry and thirsty to discover everything that God has called them to be, and we get to be a part of that. We get the opportunity to help equip and guide our generation, even by sending them to their schools, homes, and communities where we've been able to create Christian clubs. We've taught our youth to not be the leaders of tomorrow but to be the leaders of today and if you're a youth out there and you're looking for answers and you want to find out who God is come visit us this Wednesday at 6 45 p.m. and we can't wait to see you there it's been amazing to see what God has done here at Elevate Church through creativity one thing that I'm so passionate about is to see people come to Christ through seeing literally heaven being expressed here in our services I've seen people come and immediately want to get plugged in because they know that they have a gift, they have a talent, and God has called them to something bigger. And I think one thing that makes me really passionate about worship is I know that being in church and being together as a community, it only takes one moment for your whole atmosphere to change. Miracles take place, sicknesses are healed, addictions are broken, but most importantly, lives are saved. I'm super excited for what God has planned for the worship team. We just finished our first single. We're currently recording a new album. And I don't even think it stops there. I truly believe that God is going to bless us with the opportunities to build our own record label for Elevate Music Group. So yeah, go eight years, you know. Happy birthday, Elevate. Uh, we started live streaming back in 2013. And since then we've added YouTube Live and Facebook Live in 2016. And we've seen amazing growth of people not only viewing from California, but Illinois, in Texas, in Mexico, uh, in Denmark and all over Europe uh, as well as Pakistan and uh, it's just amazing to see that people that don't have church readily available to them can experience church in in their area and we're getting weekly about 4,000 views and I can't wait to see where God takes Elevate Church uh, over the airwaves in the next eight years. This has been a true blessing for our family just to be able to step in and have a place where the kids can get involved with a dance ministry, creative ministry, being in productions, camera angles, all sorts of stuff. But guess what? Even over 40, there's a place for me too. There's a place for the gifts that God's given me to be able to step in and actually make a difference and be used to glorify His kingdom. God has something for you as well in the arts if that's something that you love that we can really take this platform and we can help whether it's uh, young people or old people and inspire them to be a part of this ministry and to take advantage of every opportunity to win them to Christ through the arts and through production. It's not a ministry that we meet once a month where women just gather to laugh and drink coffee, but it's more than that. It's a safety net. It's a place where you can come, let your hair down, be who you are, revisit some of those painful places because you know that you're surrounded by women that are going to pray for you, are going to be all about you, and seeing you walk in that fullness that God has called you to do. I think to me that's what Brave is all about. It's, it's bringing ladies, uh, every woman, to know Jesus Christ and how real He is, how He sympathizes with us. And we have a high priest that knows everything and we never have to be afraid what He thinks about us because we know what He thinks about us. And that's that we are courageous, we're brave, and we are lovely. You know, one of the challenges we've been faced with 
over the years has really been getting men who value uh, rising to the man that God's called them to be. And it's been a constant challenge. And so this past year, we made a decision to look inward and raise men who make zero excuses when it comes to living out the call of God in their life. And so as we began to do that, we saw an immediate growth with all the men attending. So now here we are on year eight, and I am really looking forward to seeing what God is going to do and the hunger and desire of the men here at Elevate Church. We have the privilege of pastoring Elevate in Clarksville, Tennessee. Probably my favorite thing we were just talking about is just the community that we have here, not just on Sunday, but like outside of church. During the week, just being able to connect with people and just seeing people connect with their friends and stuff from church is pretty awesome. We felt compelled to bring Elevate to Clarksville because we felt that Clarksville didn't just need another church. We needed a place for people to connect, for people to come and experience God and experience His presence uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And we believe that through our volunteers and the people and the launch team that God has brought us here, uh, that people have an opportunity to really uh, meet Christ with every interaction. And uh, we just had our, our first grand opening service. It was amazing. Uh, April 1st, we had over 100 people attend our first service, and it's just amazing. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do next. We are the Bryants. Within the past five years, my wife and I have had the great honor of overseeing our church's marriage ministry, in which many marriages have not only been enriched, but also restored. As a result of Elevate Marriage Group, EMG, we have seen people saved and even watched others receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's been so rewarding to have been a part of over 200 marriages being impacted by God's wisdom and love. What an honor to watch couples take their marriage to the next level. Also, upwards of 30 couples have participated in our pre-engagement version of Elevate Marriage. It is amazing to watch God bless these couples' union at the altar. We have recently developed our own original curriculum called the Love Battery, which has helped couples on an even more practical level. Flourishing marriages make for flourishing families, which in turn make for a flourishing body of believers. And we love doing our part through Elevate Marriage. I pray that, that we would have this commitment, this faithfulness, this zeal for the house. And I pray that when we say, I love my church, we're saying the reason we love it is because this is where we come back together corporately and we begin to give God the biggest shot of praise. And then we understand that we're not the only ones that are strong believers in these last days, but that we truly believe in what we preach. We truly believe in what we live. We truly believe in what God says in His Word. Man, we have this amazing relationship that we want to shout it from the mountaintop because we want everybody to know this love that saved us, and His name is Jesus. Shout. Well, happy birthday, Elevate. Today is your birthday. So if this is your church, this is your birthday, whether you're eight years old or you're seven years old, say happy birthday. Well, happy birthday. It is truly an honor to get uh, to share with you this morning. And as my husband was speaking and you show that little piece of paper, I remember that as we were writing uh, what God was downloading in our spirit, all I could remember is that as he was writing the vision, right, he gives you a dream. I remember that I was, I was kind of, I literally rocking in a rocking chair because I was like, oh, dang. This is like, how is this going to happen? Because the vision is always bigger than you. The dream is always bigger than you. And at the time, I remember, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm here to remind you that if God gives you a dream, he's going to make it happen. But you can never forget that he needs your willingness. He needs your cooperation, and he needs you to say yes to him. And his promise, the promises of God are yes and amen. And I know that we say it as a cliche, something that we always say at church, the promises of God are yes and amen. But for the promises of God to come to pass, it needs your willingness and your participation to see it come to pass. So I want you to go with me to this first verse. And it's in Malachi 3.6. And this is what it says. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Isn't it awesome that God is unchangeable? And this is what you need to know this morning. If God, maybe you're sitting here this morning and God gave you a dream, God gave you a vision, he has given you a promise and you're still sitting on the promise. And maybe you're still sitting on the promise is because you're waiting. 
you're waiting to see a little bit of a sign that God is going to do it. I'm going to tell you that he's not going to show you a sign. The first sign is that you take the first step to believe that he is going to do what he promised he was going to do. So you need to know today that I remember, like, uh, when we started the church, like my husband said, um, it was really, uh, nerve it was a very, very nerve-wracking to me. It was, I was very nervous when I come to speaking because I had never spoken in my entire life. And all of a sudden, we're going to do church. And not only are we doing church, but my husband says, you're going you're gonna to preach every Wednesday. Do you understand what that means? And then Wednesday night was even smaller than Sunday, so it was like, I don't know, 20 people, right? And my husband said, I need you to deliver the word, and you need to see every seat already filled. I'm like, I'm already nervous seeing 20 people. Just imagining a room full of people, it was, it was really overwhelming for me. But I decided to take the challenge. I decided to imagine. I decided to see every seat in this house filled so this morning as i sat at the 8 a.m and i'm i'm uh and i'm receiving right now and i'm getting to impart the word of god with you this morning it overwhelms me with joy that when you do believe god and when you choose to agree with god it's been eight years it's been very a very arduous 10 years a very painful eight years i'm sorry in many times I wanted to quit because you always said that God is good all the time. But you know that God is good all the time when you are, when you are facing trials and you're facing tribulations and God is asking you to go do that and God is asking you to, he's giving you commands and yet you're, I'm one of those people that I want to see how it's going to work out. God, you're just giving me a, a, the bullet point. I need the A, B, C, and D. And many times, as I was, uh, many times during the eight years, I think I have grown so much. But I'm also going to tell you that in eight years, when he gave us the vision, when he says, I want you to, to go to New Hall, and I want you to uh, shepherd a house, and I want you to build, a, uh, to build a church, not only to build a church, but to build a school. I remember that to, for me personally, it was, I thought to myself, but I don't have what it takes and I'm going to tell you that when you agree with God, he's going to debunk every doubt that you have about yourself. When you go and you start, but, but it's not sufficient. I'm not sufficient. We don't have sufficient people. We don't have the help that we need. We don't have the leadership that we need. And you could come up with everything that you do not need. But then if you agree with God, but what, but what do you have? You have Jesus. And I think many times in the eight years, I had to remind myself, Virginia, but you have Jesus. But you have his promise. And I thought, I was asking the Lord, so what do I share this morning uh, with Elevate? What do I, I share to your children? And he told me, tell them my good news, that I, am ne I never change. That my plan for them never changes. That my purpose for their lives never changes. That my life and my call for them is irrevocable. Do you understand that irrevocable, that his word is immutable? That he is unchangeable, unchangeable, and his unchangeableness is what makes me and compels me to change. Because I know my life. I know my moments. When I said, you know what? This is too hard. But we have what it takes. Another verse that I want to give you is Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold unwaveringly to the hope we profess. I want to ask you this morning, do you still have hope? Do you still have hope? Like Abraham, he hoped against hope. Do you know what that means? It means this, the situation, the promise that he gives you, it looks bleak. It looks impossible. But when you stay with him, when you hold fast to his word, and it's a choice to hold fast to the word because when he gives you a vision, when he gives you a dream, it also comes with obstacles. It also comes with opposition. It also comes with conflict. And no one likes that. I don't like it. Well, now I'm super excited because we're eight, right? We're like, what up? Like my husband said, be gangster. I don't know how to do it, but bring it. But this bring it has brought a lot of things in my life. 
good things. Now they're good because you allow yourself to go through the process. So this is what the Lord uh, put in my heart to share with you this morning. We love to talk about dreams. My husband is a dreamer. He's a visionary. I call him promises, right? Because we'll have whatever, whatever we like, right? You know why I like, I like to call him promises? Because then it makes me, over, when we think about promise, sometimes I want to be out of the equation. Well, if he promised, right, the worst is that he's faithful, but he actually needs your participation. Yeah, I'm going to give you a promise. I'm going to give you a seed. He only gives everything is in a form of a seed. He talks about growth. He talks about vision, but everything comes in a form of a seed. And I'm going to tell you is this eight years. Today is the eighth, right, that we're celebrating. It's a new beginning. It's a new season. But in all those years, it's almost like God is asking, okay, I'm going to give you a promise just like Abraham and Sarah. Remember the story about Abraham and Sarah? God gave them a promise. But along the way, because we have a timeline. I have a timeline. When God says go to the church, I thought that this school was going to be in the States. I never thought it would be out of the country. You see, I have my own opinion, my own, my own expectation how God should do it. Oh, it would be here in Valencia, right? It would be nice, Stevenson Ranch, where you can see the whole valley. No, because I said, Oaxaca, excuse me? <laughs> and where is the money? <laughs> Show me the money, right? Eight. You get it? But then what God said, it's like, it's like Abraham and Sarah. They receive the promise, but one thing that I have learned is that God is so faithful. That God never changes his mind about you, no matter what decisions you make along the way, no matter how many mistakes you make along the way, he never changes his mind about you and who you are. Because we read the story in the Old Testament, and we know that Sarah even laughed at God. He's like, Psh, we're not going to have a child. My husband is good as dust, right? Because he was old. He said that he was good as dead. Like literally, he says, in my womb, it's dead. And he's never been alive, actually. Right? So in the midst of it, she decided, you know what? I'm going to do it my way. You know, A.B., I'm going to give you this girl. And through this girl, I'm going to birth the baby that God promised. I'm here to tell you that if God has given you a promise, a dream, a vision, it's you actually who's going to push out the baby. It's not your mom. It's not your dad. It's not your spouse, your children, your friend, your pastor, your leader. It is actually you. And he wants you to willingly sit on the birthing table, put on the gown, and start pushing. Well, in eight years, I'm going to tell you that in eight years, I've been on the birthing table. And you know when you're pushing? I mean, how many here are parents, moms? Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Because in the kingdom now, we have, we have anesthesia. You know, we have an epidural. That's why women are just popping babies, boom, boom, after the other. If that was available for me, I probably would have 10 kids. But I couldn't have epidurals. So I had to labor uh, I don't know if it was Alexis or Isaac, but 22 hours without an epidural. And you know, at some point you said, you know, forget this baby. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest, right? If you had an epidural, you're reading, your, you're reading magazines. But if you don't have an epidural, you're pushing. But there were times in my life that I was pushing, and this, this is the birth, the dream that God has given us. And I was like, I went out. I went out, Lord, I thank you for the promise that you have given Elvay, but I want someone else to push this baby <laughs> because it's too painful. So I'm here to tell you that until you get to the end of the process and you decide, you know what, I'm going to push one more time. I'm going to push one more time, and I'm going to make sure that this God-given dream is going to come out of me. And God has given us a midwife, and his name is Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we're never alone. 
And when you're having a child, you don't do it alone. We're not in the 1800s. Even if you have a midwife, you're one of those people, you have a team around you that they're going to help you birth that baby. We're better together. We're better together. So I want to encourage you today that whatever dream God has given you, whatever vision God has given you, you continue to push until you see it come to pass and know that he will fulfill his promise in your life. So happy birthday to you. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent job. Let, let me tell you something. You know what? When we gave birth to both our children, uh, uh, they, they both had to go to NICU um, for, for various reasons, challenges they had. But Isaac, when he was born, he was born premature. He was only a three-pound hamburger and uh, just a tiny little thing. And immediately, they, they, she pushed the dream out, right? And immediately, the dream was underdeveloped. And so they had to rush my child and put him in an incubator to protect him from the elements that would try to destroy him, kill him, harm him, hurt him. Elevate Church, God created the church to be your spiritual incubator. And some of you have been prematurely uh, developed, and you're still maybe at your halfway mark. Some of you may be in your quarter mark. Some of you may be in your fourth uh, quarter. I don't know what quarter you're in, but guess what? When you come to Elevate Church, when you come to God's house like you're in right now, you're really right now in God's spiritual incubator. And he's healing you. He's restoring you. He's maturing you. He's nurturing you. He's wound, uh, healing the wounds. He's, he's doing all these amazing things. But it's all a matter of perspective of how you see the church. Because some of us have been, have been hurt, whether it's been in the church, outside of the church, but at the end of the day, you have to know that your heavenly father, when he gave birth to his dream, you, he knew exactly what he was doing. And let me tell you something. Any dream that God is going to birth out of you, you always have to remember it must bring glory to God. It can't just be about you. It can't just be about birthing dreams of vacations. Nothing wrong with vacations. You know, my dream is to go to Germany. Anybody want to go to Germany? Man, we should do like a mission trip there or something, huh? <laughs> Germany needs Jesus, man. We should do a mission trip to Germany or Paris or somewhere. I don't know. But we'll win some Frenchies or something. But, um, but, but those are dreams that are my desires. And God, God wants to bring the desires of your heart to pass, okay? Nothing wrong with having desires. Nothing wrong with wanting a home and a car and a nice job and, and a nice paycheck. Nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, but where in your life is the mark of God. Where in your life is the dream of God being birthed out of you? Because at the end of the day, you know what, you know what would be the worst thing? Is for you to realize one day that you, would, that you would then go into your new birth in heaven after you leave this earth, you die, and that you stand before the Father and you realize that you wasted days, weeks, months, years, decades chasing the wrong dream. Some of you should be doing beyond what you're doing right now. But because fear, the fear of unknown, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of what if, it keeps you in a place of prison. And then you just begin to just live comfortable. Or, or you know, you start saying, I'm too tired. I'm too old. You know, my back hurts. My leg hurts. You know. My spouse hurts, my, you know, whatever it is. And then you just, you just, you just, you give birth to more, more Ishmael's than you do Isaac's. And God's saying, that's not the dream I created within you. God created an awesome dream inside of you. Now, let me tell you something. Um, um, before we leave, we got to get out of here already. I'm hungry. How about you? Um, le let me tell you something. The most common question people ask is this, how do I know what's God's dream and what's my dream? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Like, how do you know what's, what's me and what's God? Oh, well, can I just give you some few simple little answers for that one real quick? And then we'll go grab some, uh, some grilled cheese sandwiches and some, some, you know, burritos and hamburgers and all that good stuff. Okay, here's the answer. This is how you know if it's God's dream. Okay, ready. You know if it's God's dream if, number one, it's bigger than you. 
Anytime God gives you a dream, it's going to be beyond your ability. It's going to be beyond whatever it is that you feel you can accomplish. It's, it's not going to be something that you can attain by yourself. You know why? Because every single dream that God gives to man or woman, it must include people to help you with that vision. Elevate Church, yes, it started with two people who had got a vision and a dream from God. But then ar around this vision, God began to surround us with people, okay. And from those 12 people, we then began to just begin to build the, the, the dream God wanted and develop that dream. Number two, uh, this is how you know it's God's dream if you can't let it go. It just keeps just, ah, just it pulling the strings of your heart. You can't let it go. Like, man, I got to do it. I got to, I just, I have to do it. I got to figure it out. It just never lets you go. That's when you know it's a God dream. If you got all excited and you had this amazing dream, like, yay, well, God's told me to do this. But then like a month later, you're like, it have not even come up in your mind anymore. That was you, right? That was just a burp you had. That's all that was. Number three, you would be willing to give everything for it. You see, something you guys don't know, maybe some of you do, prior to coming to work, in ministry and, and answer God's call for my life. I was already in corporate world making six digit figures and, and, uh, and, and was just moving up the ladder very fast, okay? Enjoyed it, loved it, passionate about it, uh, loved in that community. But then God was saying, okay, Mauricio, let that go. And it's a shock when you're just like, well, my dream was never to be in the ministry. That was never my dream. It was never my desire. My desire was to help in ministry and be a leader in ministry and help people, help my pastor. But God's dream never looks like the dream that you thought it was going to be. I'm telling you right now, it never looks that way. And you know what he said? He said, let it go. And so it cost me everything. You know what? You know how, how you know it's really God? I left that dream, okay, my dream of nice paycheck, nice everything, to go work as a uh, janitor in the church. That's how I started ministry. The church janitor making minimum wage. You see, if you're not willing to give everything for it, it's not God's dream. Number four, it will last forever. It will last forever. If your dream dies when you die, it was never God's dream. Your dream should last, outlast you, your children, your children's children. There should be something that when you leave this earth that says, wow, man, that person left something for us to continue to enjoy. It has to outlast you. If it's only good while you're alive, I mean, perfect guy, Steve Jobs. He got a big dream, didn't he? Did that dream die with him? A lot of people said this, oh, man, when Steve Jobs is gone, that's it, man. This thing's going down. No, it's not. Obviously, God will use people on this earth to do big things. Now, whether they ever come to Christ, now that's on them. You know why? Because God, God doesn't withhold himself from what he's going to do in any person's life. People hold themselves from the relationship that God wants to have with them in their life. Number five, it meets a need nobody else has met. It meets, man, stop trying to copy everybody. Huh? God, God doesn't make copycats. God, God doesn't photo scan his people. God creates originals. The gift inside of you is an OG. So you have to find the, 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 the need, and you have to meet that need. It can't just be, oh, they're doing it, so I'll do it. You know? that's, that's not smart. Let's stop. Let's stop. That's why, listen, there's a lot of great everything churches out there, but we are who we are. Right? This is who we are. We have fun. This is what church is like. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm meeting the need that I see at Elevate Church for this community. Amen? So it meets a need that nobody else has met. Number uh, six, it brings, it brings, it brings, does your life bring glory to God? Huh? Does the dream you're living right now bring glory to God? You don't need a platform to bring glory to God. You need obedience to bring glory to God. And every time you obey God, you bring Him glory. 
Every time you're willing to take whatever risk for God. For example, uh, there's a guy named Raul here. He's a part of our security team, right? Security? No. Ra Raul is not security. He's an usher? He's usher and security? Okay, we have a guy named Raul. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what a simple dream looks like. Last week we baptized 17 uh, people, right? One of the people that were going to be baptized got nervous and scared and just felt like, man, I can't do it. And he, he left. And Raul came to me and said, hey, pastor, pastor, hey, man, uh, you, know, you know that guy? And I know that guy. I love him. He's like, man, he got scared and he left. Uh, and he's, he's like, should I go get him? I'm like, what do you think? He's like, I'm like, do you want to get baptized? Yeah. I'm like, go get him. You know? And he. <laughs> and, and, and he brought him back. And, and together, we begin to tell him, hey, it's, it's all good. You can got this man God you don't have to be perfect to get water baptized I mean yeah the water's going to turn black when you get in there but <laughs> that's normal bro that's normal you know as a matter of fact the moment all of us walked into this church it was perfect until we walked in we jacked it up right before I walked in this building before my wife and I, it was like perfect no sin no drama we walked in <laughs> just all of us jacked this church up. But we're better together. So how do I get a dream from God? It's very simple. Look at this. We have to get along with God. And we have to listen. Everybody, everybody look at your neighbor and say, shh. Man. Y'all, let, let me give you a, write this one down. Zip. The lip. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. Say that a few times, it sounds weird. Just zip it and realize that God says, be still and know that I am God. See, the moment you understand that he's God, you'll be quiet. And then God can finally download something. The reason you can't get a dream is because we're too busy interrupting him. God's trying to talk and we're like, but, uh, yeah, but, oh, no, no. God's like, just be still. Callate. Be quiet. Be still and know that I am God. And you know what? When you finally realize that, when you finally come to that place where you understand that then God can give you a dream. An Indian tribe in Oregon used to send young men out. And when they came of age with the instruction, don't come back until you have a dream. Don't come back until you have a vision. Those who got discouraged came back early. Those who stayed until they had a vision and a dream became the leaders of the tribe. Come on, stop quitting. Stop giving up every time it gets challenging. Like, I started following God, getting closer, but then all hell broke loose. That's the dream. See, because the dream will always come with resistance. The dream will always come with, with pushback. The dream will always come with, with people trying to put you down and not agree with you. You know, I had so many people when I opened the school for uh, Elevate Kids Global. I had so many people in our church get weird. Like we're saving lives. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? But thank God that I'm spirit led and not man led. Amen. Because think about it, we wouldn't be seeing what we saw today. Last verse, quickly. Let's get out of here. James two fourteen says this: Dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? That kind of faith. I can't save anybody. Huh? What good does it do you just to come to church every week and to sit down and never have the faith to be generous? Come on, the faith to serve. The faith to chase someone that needs to get water baptized. That's God's dream. Why do we complicate it? The faith to share the love of Christ with someone we work with, man. How hard is that? That's God's dream. 
Why do we complicate the dream of God? Why? Just a simple idea of going from just like listening and just saying, you know, God, I'm going to do something now. I'm going to stop waiting because God's waiting on you, man. He's waiting. He's waiting on all of us. What are we waiting for? A sign? I'll show you a sign. A wonder? Well, I'll show you a wonder. I'm wondering when you're going to get up. You see, because this is where I started. I started going to church just like all of you, sitting down like this, 21 years old, broken, hurting, angry, violent. But when I heard the message, I did that. I activated my faith. I got up out of my chair. And I walked up to the front. And when they said, who wants to know Jesus? I didn't give a rip who was in that room. I said, I need Jesus. And that was the day, December 1997, where God's greatest dream was born. And that happened through my salvation with Jesus Christ. And the rest is history. And history is still being made. How many are ready to live out God's dream? Bow your head, close your eyes. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.